No, not Christmas, silly. It's not fiction November time! Yeah, sorry about being silly there, but it is the best reading initiative of the entire year, and it's finally here, and by here we mean our day of filming. It is the 6th of October, but I am keen and extra, and just really wanna do my TBR, because the announcement video came out yesterday, and we're excited! So, non-fiction November, what? on earth is it? <laughs> if you have been on my channel for a while you probably already know of Olive's channel but it is a reading initiative focused on reading non-fiction that happens throughout the month of November and it's hosted by the wonderful Olive from a book Olive as well as now several other people on other different social media platforms so I will link her announcement video down below as well as all of their stuff on like Instagram and Twitter and TikTok even maybe and other such things Goodreads and whatnot and the idea is to just read a little bit more non-fiction than you normally would. Non-fiction definitely doesn't get enough love on booktube and I am a huge advocate for it as you probably know if you're a regular here. I myself have hosted two reading initiatives focused on non-fiction this year including Springathon for uh, nature writing and the history challenge for history nonfiction, um, which definitely could not have been possible if it weren't for the groundwork that nonfiction November has done within the booktube community. So we are excited to say the least. Um, the there are four prompts, like they are every year. They are not compulsory, and they are four individual words that you can interpret in your own way. So I have three possible books for each prompt, and then I have a couple of audio books that I haven't bothered to try and fit in. There's also a group book this year that I'm not going to be taking part in. I believe it's more of a memoir, which is not really my style of non-fiction, but that'll be in the announcement video instead. So the four words from this year are time, movement, buzz, and discovery. And we're gonna cover time first. The first uh, book that I'm gonna hopefully read is Time Travel, A History, which I don't think I really need to explain why this works for time. This is by James Gleck, and this does what it says on the tin. It is a history of time travel as a concept, both in science, but also pop culture. I picked it up a while ago, and uh, H.G. Wells was kind of the, the originator of the time travel concept, and it's gonna sort of track it as a concept throughout pop culture, and I think it's gonna be really, really interesting. I personally love time travel books, and I want to do a whole video on time travel fiction, but I'd also really like to read this so that I can talk about it in that video as a non-fiction alternative, because I quite like doing fiction, non-fiction pairings. So it's about time that I got around, about time. <laughs> That wasn't planned to get around to this one. The next book that I'm going to be hopefully reading is Charity and Sylvia, A Same-Sex Marriage in Early America by Rachel Hope Cleaves. This isn't here yet, but I do have it on order from a particular bookstore um, linked down below, which is Category Is Books. Um, and basically this is looking at the concept of same-sex marriage, which is often considered to be a very modern concept, but that apparently is historically not very accurate. So I'd like to learn more about it. And this is going to be looking at it as a social phenomenon throughout time, which I thought would be very, very fitting. And then the final book for this particular grouping is, uh, we're gonna be going back in time and we're gonna be including a book on natural history, which is my personal favorite subgenre of nonfiction. And for that one, I'm gonna be reading Trilobite by Richard Forte. You have to say excited, because that's an exclamation mark. Trilobites were once one of the most numerous um, kinds of animals and sort of species on the planet. There are thousands and thousands of different kinds. They were around, believe, uh, Mesozoic? Lower Paleozoic? I'm not 100% certain. Um, this is why I need to read the book and find out. I'm terrible at remembering my Ezoics. Um, but basically they were around a long time ago before the dinosaurs and I'd love to learn more about them. They were featured in um, David Attenborough's documentary, what was it, something like Life on the Planet? first signs of life something i'll link it down below but it's a really cool documentary about like early life on um, planet earth and uses a lot of early cgi techniques and trilobites were in that and they piqued my interest so i've been wanting to pick this up ever since the next uh, little prompt is movement and for that one i'm going to be focusing on um, mainly social movements but also an art movement oh and the art movement one is In Montparnassus, which is the emergence of surrealism in Paris by du from Duchamp to Dali. And this is by Sue Rowe. I've had this on my shelf for a while and it is on one of my five star predictions lists. So I do need to get to it sometime this year. And we're rapidly running out of this year. And it's looking at the various artists who pioneered the surrealist movement within Paris. So I think this is going to be really good. I've not read an art history book in a while. And last nonfiction I remember, I read a book about the Pre-Raphaelites that was one of my all time favorites. So I think that this will be a good one 
to check out. Now we're going to be talking about social movements, one of them being the queer community, and that is Queer Intentions, A Personal Journey, journey Through LGBTQ Plus Culture by Amelia Abraham. It kind of does what it says on the tin, so many non-fiction books do with their subtitles, but this is a combination of a memoir from Amelia or like an autobiography and also a look at the LGBTQ plus community and historically sort of how it has got to where it is today. So I think that this will be really interesting um, to check out and I enjoy the cover, it's very bright. And talking about anti-racist movements, I have the book So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Iluo. This is, uh, again, kind of what it says on the tin. It's more like a collection of essays looking at particular um, areas of anti-racism. One of them's titled like, Why You Can't Touch My Hair, for example. Um, and it has been, it's been hugely popular this year um, based off of what happened in June with George Floyd and the um, protests that happened around then. So it's been one that's been on my list for a little while and it's time to get to it. And as a total side note, this is a really lovely like copy of this book. It's sort of one of the mass um, tray paperbacks, but it's just got a lovely like floppy feel to it and more books should come in this particular format this is great um weird little side note for you there so those are the books i want to read for movement and the next one we have is buzz so for buzz i'm actually interpreting the word in three different ways rather than kind of grouping it together and the first one is going to be a book that had a lot of buzz or hype about it and that is all boys aren't blue by george m johnson and this is a memoir from george m johnson about being a queer black man and i believe potentially actually trans um, although I wouldn't quote me on that, doesn't make it clear. I will find out by reading it. Um, it was hugely popular a couple of months back when it was released and it has a stunning cover. And I wanted to order it a while ago, but it, we were kind of getting distribution issues over in the UK. Um, and I got an email from Categories Books saying like, hey, we can finally actually get our hands on it. So I figured this was perfect timing for Nonfiction November for me to find out what all the buzz is about about this particular book. It's also pretty much the only memoir apart from um, queer intentions on the list because I don't read that many memoirs so it was nice to chuck in another one there most of my non-fiction tends to be history or nature writing and like quite a broad range of history so it's always good to chuck in a few more things um, on the note of nature writing I wanted to read a book about things that go buzz and for that we're going to do The Secret Life of Trees How They Live and Why They Matter by uh, Colin Tudge and I'm going to hope that this has some insects in it to make the buzzing thing work <laughs> This is a little bit of a stretch, but I really want to read this book. Um, I was have been like getting more into nature writing and especially interested in trees having read Lab Girl at the beginning of the year by Hope Sharon, who is like a paleobotanist and she talked about um, there was kind of whole sections about trees and like how they kind of communicate with each other um, and what they kind of do as, as life forms and I was really really fascinated and I believe the earlier sections of this book do look at prehistoric trees which would be like right up my street. Funnily enough it's quite hard to find pop science books on paleobotany so I'm hoping that this will fill a gap for me and I've heard really good things about it so it would be nice to finally pick it up. And then because it's always nice to throw in some light-hearted easy to read fun non-fiction in amongst some of the slightly heavier stuff in some ways we're going to be reading Bonk, A Curious Coupling of Sex and Science by Mary Roach. I adore Mary Roach, I think she's a fantastic science writer, and my hope is that as we're talking about sex, potentially some of the chapters will talk about some other things that buzz that might be connected to your sex life. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I thought that that might be an entertaining way to take the uh, buzzword of buzz. So Mary Roach is great fun, and this will be the fifth book of hers that I've read. So she's a firm favourite, and I'm assuming that this will be a great light-hearted popcorn style read to break up some of these bigger books. And then the final um, word is discovery and uh, we've got again a couple of different ways to take this. This first one is discovering Dorothea which I figured would just be great because it's in the title itself and this is the life of the pioneering fossil hunter Dorothea Bate. Um, I don't actually know much about Dorothea or yet because obviously I've not read it yet it's by uh, Caroline Schindler by the way but I did read towards the beginning of the year The Fossil Hunter which is about Mary Anning who was a um, fossil hunter from the Victorian or like very early Victorian era and she found some of the earliest examples of more like plesiosaurs and pterosaurs and from reading that this one was actually recommended and I'm really intrigued by the sort of um, underbelly of the 
paleontology community especially historically and these sort of um, various women who went out and actually found a lot of the fossils that then various male scientists kind of took credit for and sort of without the fossil hunters they wouldn't have had anything to study so I think this will be a really interesting read to shine a spotlight on somebody who's been a bit forgotten through history um, and also clearly it's going to feature dinosaurs which is right up my street perfect let's chuck in some more prehistory to this and then the next two books are about discovering different continents different um, things outside of my very western both um, curriculum through school but also westernized reading I'm trying to broaden my non-fiction horizons. So the first of those is Silver Sword and Stone by Marie Arana and this is the story of Latin America in three extraordinary lives. Again subtitle kind of does the work for you but it's looking at three particular individuals scattered across Latin America through history and it's about learning um, about what Latin America has been through through these different lenses. So the first one is looking at silver which is kind of commerce and what happened in Latin America with trade and also um, colonialization with Europe. Uh, the second one is about um, the civil war and it, the third one is about um, religion within Latin America and its connections with Catholicism but also other stuff going on there. That was a very brief description and I might have got some of those details wrong because I haven't read it yet but I'm really keen to. It was one that I bought straight after the history challenge as wanting to broaden my horizons a little bit. And on a very similar note we have Pathfinders by The Golden Age of Arabic Science by Jim Al-Kahili. This is, um, again, does what it says on the tin, looking at Arabic science in particular. Most of my, I, I love reading science, I especially love history of science and history of ideas, but again, a lot of it has been very, very focused on Europe, sort of Western ideas. So I thought that this would be really interesting to read to find out more about the various discoveries that were made and sort of um, inventions and things from the Arabic side of the world. So I'm looking forward to this one. And if I enjoy it, I actually have another book from this author on my Kindle, which is about quantum biology, which sounds very intense and too scary for this nonfiction November. So we're gonna go for this one, see if I like his writing style, and then I might be brave enough to try. I think it's called Life. I'll link it down below. I can't remember, but it, it looks cool. So those are the ones that I'm trying to fit in specifically with the prompts. And then I have two audiobooks that I'm going to try and get to throughout the month as well. The first one of these is Viking Britain by Thomas Williams. Um, I have it in physical form. I do have it on audiobook too. And this again, it is about a history of Viking Britain. I know almost nothing about the Vikings and I probably have a lot of um, terrible stereotypical kind of ideas of them which are almost definitely wrong. I listened to a podcast about them and they were featured briefly in the Golden Thread and the little bit that was in there did definitely highlight that my general conception of them was like wildly inaccurate. They're not quite the barbarians that they tend to be portrayed as in pop culture. So I think this will be really interesting and I picked this up when I went to York to visit my sister because York has some very very strong connections with Viking history so I think this will be very very cool. And then the final one is Black and British by David Olasuga I believe and this one is a proper chunky book but it is looking at um, the black community throughout British history and kind of um, trying to address the misconception that black people have only been in the UK since Windrush and not before. So it goes right 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 back to Roman time I believe and then goes all the way forward and through. This is going to be great because it's going to be a lovely sweeping look at British history in general where my ability to place things in connection to other things is shockingly bad in history so I'm going to really appreciate this but also is looking at um, trying to correct some of the imbalances in my own kind of curriculum and background similar to some of the other books that I've picked up on here but it is huge it's like 28 hours of an audiobook I do have it in ebook form as well so I might kind of mix between the two and I think I have a buddy read planned with this if if you're the person I'm buddy reading this with, can you comment down below? I'm sorry, House Move has got me all frazzled, <laughs> so do let me know. So those are the books that I'm planning on reading for Nonfiction November. There will be a couple of fiction in there as well, and I'll need to read Wild Seed by Octavia E. Butler for the slow read-along. I haven't got my copy yet, so it'll probably be in November. And whatever the book club book is for the Gothlet book club, which I join in with, um, assuming that it's not a classic that I've already read, because I think it's classic month next month. Um, so yeah, and don't worry, across the, the month in the run-up to Nonfiction November, I'm going to be doing some nonfiction book reviews, some specific recommendations lists for some different kinds of nonfiction, and I have tons of nonfiction content on my channel already that I will link down below a bunch of them that I put out recently, but again, if you're a regular here, you already know a bunch of it. So uh, I have a wonderful reading week. Are you taking part? And I'll chat to you soon. Bye!